Well, um, one of the last steps be before uh, being able to include the, our model into UDK is to rig the character and to create some sort of uh, UV, UV maps for this. I will not go uh, step by step over the rigging process, but this is just a regular rigging, rigging the, but uh, keeping the names that the actual characters of UDK are using. There are a lot of uh, tutorials about rigging, maybe I'll do a, a rigging specific tutorial in the future. Um, I have uh, my character rigging rigged, and I have uh, also do a UV map, a fast, uh, real quick um, auto, out, auto UVs, just to lay out some UVs that we can use uh, on the normal maps. There's a lot of work that we can do on these UV maps to make them better, but for the purpose of this uh, demo video, they're okay. It's just a fast, um, it's just a fast uh, auto UV layout. Uh, what I want to show is the normal maps. I will create them by using this X normal tool. I'll load all my high definition meshes and my low definition meshes. Uh, as the high definition, I will add uh, all the high definition meshes that I export from Zbrush. These are not the higher one. Uh, for the for production, we need to use um, the higher definition subdivision level from Zbrush. But for the sake of this uh, demo, these are okay. And on the low, as a low definition one, I will use uh, the one that I that I create by repotabolizing the surface uh, with uh, the next tool. I'll make this a bit bigger. I'll use a name on it. And I'm, gener I'm generating here is the normal map. What the normal map is is uh, like um, indicates the how the shadow should uh, project on the surface. This this will uh, transfer all the fine detail to our low poly mesh into UDK. Another map that I like to create is the ambient occlusion. The ambient occlusion is some pre-baked shadow on the surface. Okay, you can see here how, how the normal map looks. Uh, and the ambient occlusion can be used also for texturing. It gave us a great guideline to texture based on the UV layout. I'll create really quick this ambient occlusion pass. Okay, now we have the two maps, the ambient occlusion and the normal map. We are ready to jump into UDK to export the model using ActorX. You can find that plugin from Maya on the UDK site. Just uh, download the ActorX plugin and export the model as a skeletal model. Alright, I'll jump onto UDK. This is a scene that I used to, for testing purposes, for testing lighting and stuff, uh, for testing in this case our character. I'll look into the content browser of UDK. Um, I'll position myself here so I can import the new character and I will import this um, the the model itself and the maps for the occlusion I will change the patch name maybe something like character soldier package and I will select deferred compression so it's, it's a bit quicker and the compression happens when you save the package. The compression settings it will be default. Uh, this is the mesh. I'll just click OK. And this is the normal. For the normal it's just a bit different. I'm going to select uh, normal map on the compression. That means no compression at all. So the normal maps looks uh, better on the surface. OK. Now I'll go to 
save the package and here it is our soldier already into UVK already rigged uh, it has the, the same name convention rig that the UDK character used so we can use uh, stock animations of course we can create uh, our, our own animations by using ActorX on Maya we can, uh, using ActorX we can export any any animations into UDK but these, these are the, uh, the stock ones we are ready, we are ready to, to use this character we need to work a bit on the on the rigging maybe and of course on the texturing but it's, it's already there Th there he is threatening us there he is like dancing I think Okay, I'll create a new material for this and I'll use our, our two textures, the normal map and the uh, ambient occlusion one. Uh, I will plug the ambient occlusion here and I will plug the normal map here so we have a, a more complex surface on this. I will also apl apply this to the specular. Maybe we need uh, to darken a bit the diffuse so I will create a parameter, a uh, three vector parameter and I multiply this is like Photoshop, it's like I'm gonna, I'm gonna use a multiply layer of uh, a, a three uh, parameters color an RGB color to our uh, <coughs> to multiply by our texture and connect it here now the uh, the three parameters are, are zero zero zero, so it's that that's black, of course. But uh, I will transform this into a parameter. Um, as quick as I do that, I can just select the the three parameters separately and the RGB. I can turn this into a color and have this uh, color picker, which is a lot easier for me to pick a color and maybe I will give this uh, specular power so the the power is, is not just a linear flat uh, transition between the bright and the highlights and the dark part well, I will apply this new material to our mesh, our skeletal mesh and there, and there he is which is just a, a rough material. We need to work a lot on the texturing, but as you can see, a uh, lot, lot of the e even in this um, this uh, quick, uh, not really high poly uh, meshes that I have used, and this uh, bad uh, um, bad UV map, uh, you can see a lot of the the fine details transfer into the surface. We'll work a bit more here. We'll not save the changes, and I will put uh, the solder in this scene. This is how it how it looks with the lighting. It looks very good. Uh, one th a good thing about this low poly um, skeletal meshes in UDK is that doesn't you you can create uh, literally thousands of copies of the of these uh, models with just a, a bit just a little bit of overheating of the on the the processor um, the processor time that that it's going to take to render them this is auto saving oh, oh, there it is We are playing this. We are on the game. Can move around, depending how they are gonna look. 